Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is heart. H-E-A-R-T. Really? You bet your life! The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx! Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples tonight. Who's first to try for the $3,000? Well, just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any youngsters present tonight who'd like to get married someday if they found the right person. And here are the two chosen by our audience, Miss Muriel Lawson and Mr. John Lee. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. John Lee. Where are you from, Mr. Lee? I'm from Hollywood, right here in Hollywood. You born here? Yes, sir. That's an unusual thing. We rarely have anybody who's born right here. How old are you, uh, John? Twenty-two. Twenty-two, huh? Well, that's unusual, too. We rarely have anyone that's twenty-two here. <laughs> What's your hometown, Muriel? Des Moines, Iowa. How old are you, uh, Muriel? Twenty-two. Twenty-two, huh? Well, that's a wonderful age. Now, let's see. If you two would like to get married? <laughs> what, uh, what kind of a dream man are you seeking, uh, Muriel? Well... Somebody about medium height and dark hair and dark eyes and, Say, and so intelligent. So far, I'm doing all right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, go on. Well, he should have a good job and, and be able to support a family. How large is your family? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a family. No, I mean, when I get married. <laughs> well, actually, you've decided to marry uh, John here and raise a family. Is that right? <laughs> No, I mean, whoever I marry. I don't know who I'm going to marry yet. You don't care as long as John will support your family. <laughs> what kind of work do you do, John? Well, in the mornings, I work as a janitor at the school that I'm attending, Geller Theater Workshop, the dramatic school. Oh, you're an actor? I hope to be, yes. Oh. I wondered why you weren't wearing a necktie. <laughs> Do you really expect to support a wife and family as an actor? Well, I think so, yes. Would you be interested in my psychiatrist's phone number? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of roles do you prefer? Well, dramatic roles, Shakespearean roles. If you want to eat, my advice is to forget Shakespearean roles and stick to Parker House roles. <laughs> What kind of a job do you have, uh, Muriel? I work on a soda fountain. Oh, you must get awfully wet, don't you? <laughs> Sticky but wet. Where do you sling your sodas? At uh, Will Wright's. Oh. Do you like soda fountain dishes, John? Very much, very much. I'm not referring to Muriel here, you know. <laughs> Although she is quite a dish. Yeah. Well, if you were confronted with Muriel and a marshmallow sundae, which would you prefer? Well, Muriel's a... Far sweeter than a marshmallow sundae. <laughs> Muriel, if you save ham sandwiches at your fountain, you doubtless recognize John. <laughs> now, can anybody whip up a fancy soda, or does it take any uh, any particular talent? Well, I th I think it takes a talent. I mean, I mean, for instance, if you want to make a soda, you'd have to use a fine stream of of uh, seltzer first. Fine stream. I used to know a fellow named Fine Stream. Yeah. <laughs> he owes me five dollars now. Then. <laughs> Joe Fine Stream. Huh? <laughs> now let's get back to you, John. Tell me, why do you want to be an actor? Well, I've always wanted to be an actor as far back as I can remember. And I've tried other occupations and haven't been too successful. Uh, what else did you try? Well, I was a mailman for a while. A mailman? Mm -hmm. I was a substitute mail carrier in school. Oh, well, you just carry postal cards and... <laughs> and uh, now you're studying dramatics now at yes, Geller? Uh, at Geller, yeah. Well, how are you making out in your studies? Well, pretty good, I guess. My teacher says I have an expressive face. 
Really? And all the time I thought it was tight shoes. <laughs> charming couple, or as Shakespeare said, oh, that I were a glove that I could kiss your cheek. That doesn't make much sense, but at this point, I'm sure Shakespeare doesn't care anymore. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $3,000 question, but right now, I want you to pay attention to a message of importance. Remember this, if you're in the market for a new car, no matter where you look, no matter how many new cars you ride in or drive, your very best value is the beautiful new DeSoto. Listen to just a few of the great DeSoto features. Sensational AuraFlow shock absorbers, which level out the worst bumps you can find. Safety rim wheels, which help you keep your car under perfect steering control in case of blowout. Comfortable chair-high seats to keep your body in the proper posture to make even the long trips a restful experience. Driving without shifting, waterproof ignition, big, safe 12-inch brakes. Yes, feature after feature make the new, all-new DeSoto the best value you'll find anywhere. See it. Drive it. The beautiful new DeSoto. Now at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth the value jewel of the low-priced field. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. George? You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $3,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected nicknames of movie stars, past and present. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? Fifteen. Fifteen. Who is known as the It Girl? Oh, um, Clara Bow. Clara Bow is right. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You have $35. Remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the $35 will you bet on your second question? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. What star was formerly known as the Oomph Girl? And Sheridan. And Sheridan. <laughs> and Sheridan was 50 miles away. <laughs> That's <from> something. <laughs> you have $69, nevertheless. $69. Here's your third question. How much of the 69 are you going to try? 68. 68. 68. What star was known as the Sheik? Oh, Rudolph Valentino. Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> You now have $137. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 137 are you going to bet? 136. All right. 137. All right. Live it. <laughs> One of our finest actors was called The Great Profile. What was his name? John Barrymore. John Barrymore. Barrymore. Thank you, very much. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And you wind up with later, $274. Uh, Groucho, we yes, asked for... Yes, Mr. Uh, Fetterman. We asked for volunteers with unusual occupations tonight. And just before we went on the air, Mr. Louis Laurent was selected. His partner is a housewife from the studio audience, Mrs. Ella Elias. Folks, come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Ella Elias, where are you from? Originally, Chicago. What sort of work does your husband do, uh, Ella? He's a building contractor. Oh. And uh, Mr. Louis uh, Laurent, huh? Laurent. Laurent, huh? Uh, Laurent. How, how do you do, Louis? Well, uh, very glad to meet you, and uh, thank you very much. Très bien, merci. Likewise, I'm Enchanté. sure. Enchanté. Enchanté vous connaître. Well, what did you say? I enchanted to know you. Well, let's not overdo it now. <laughs> you hardly look enchanted. Huh? <laughs> where, where were you born? I was born at sea in the Indian Ocean. Was your mother an octopus? No. What were you doing in the Indian Ocean, and where was your mother at the time? Well, she was on the way to Madagascar. You were born in the water, and she was on the way to Madagascar? <laughs> She's no fool. She knew you were coming, so she took the first boat for Madagascar. <laughs> now, Ella... Uh, uh, Mrs. Elias, you don't mind if I call you Ella, huh? No. Uh, everybody call you Ella? 
Well, my close friends do. Uh, well, I'm as close as anybody you'll ever meet. Huh? <laughs> I haven't spent a nickel in three weeks. Huh? <laughs> now, since you're a housewife, let's talk about your job. Uh, how much time do you spend on housework? Well, I go to the Los Angeles Trade School from 9 until 3. You go to Los Angeles Trade School? I never heard of it. How'd your football team make out last year? We don't have any. Oh, it's like USC. <laughs> Well, uh, Louie, let's get back to you. Now, you were chosen because of your unusual occupation. Just just what is it? Well, I'm a big game hunter. A what? Big game hunter. A big game hunter? Hunt, yeah. What kind of uh, games do you hunt? Oh, uh, floating well, crap games? Oh. Well, <laughs> That's a big game sometimes. Well, all kind of Ellen's, of course. Uh, what? Hunter, Ellen's, gazelles. Ellen's? What's Ellen's? an Ellen? Well, an Ellen is a kind of, uh, well, uh, kind of boof. A boof. Give me yes. that again. Uh... Well, the head of a bull and the body of a cow. The head of a bull and the yes. body of a cow? Yes. But well, what is a bull? Well, uh, that's a Helen. A Helen. Enchant. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Elias, do you have any idea what he's talking about? <laughs> I was just checking, that's all. Go ahead. <laughs> Could you tell us about some of your hunting experiences? Have you ever had any close calls? Well, I don't mean in a poker game, I mean... A close call I had, that was in, Mad in Madagascar. Where? With a, in Madagascar. Yeah. Madagascar with a crocodile. I with was, a crocodile? Yes, with a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> He's back big game hunting again. Huh? <laughs> you were hunting crocodiles in South Africa? No, no, I was eaten by the tail. By his tail. The you were eaten by the tail? Yes. <laughs> when, they, when they eat it, it, it you will they eat it by the tail. And when you are on the water, they bite you. They get you by the mouth. Could you write this out and shove it under my door? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, Louis, of all your hunting expeditions, which one stands out most prominently? Tell well, us about uh, it, huh? Uh, that's who was on Throw the in a few English words this time. <laughs> that's who's on the Just by way of variety. <laughs> it comes out every Wednesday. So? Well, uh, the trail I had, that was in one of my expeditions through the Belgium Congo. We follow a family, five families, a group of 16 gorillas for about three weeks and took documentary of them. And they are very human. You followed 16 gorillas yes, for two months? Well, photograph them, yes. They speak, you know, they talk between them. Well, when they... When they you say they talk with each other? Well, they talk with each other. Yes, sir. Next, you'll be telling me you talk their language, too, Louis. Well, I know someone, you know. Well, I know. I know some... Uh, Louis, I can't but... say that I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear some gorilla talk, huh? Well... Uh, Let's hear some gorilla well, talk and be careful what you say. When they want something to eat, they... <laughs> there you are. When they want, of course, they are a good father. Very good. Take, take care of their bibis. Take care of their bibis and carry the bibis. Take care of their what? Of their bibis. How do you spell that? Bibis, B-A-B-I-E-S. Well, that's close enough, but it turns out to be a gorilla. <laughs> now, you mentioned going through pygmy land. Were you friendly with the pygmies? Oh, very well. And uh, we met two of them. We met the chief one at uh, Boo Boo Boo, called Batutu of Boo Boo Boo. And the oh, other well, one... wait a minute. That was... Who is Babo Boo or Tutu Tutu? Okay. Say, I speak it pretty well, don't I? I've only picked it up recently. Too. The Batutu was at a Boo Boo Boo. And you. you... Ba Ba Ba, Tutu Tutu! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and you could. You could this is known as the Go Climb a Tree Department. <laughs> well, the way I think I've learned enough about big game hunting tonight. Except that I have many idea what he was talking about. <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other two couples, you'll get a chance at the $3,000 question. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The soda fountain girl and her partner won $274. Here we go. Now let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the cities of the United States. All of these cities are over 100,000 population according to the 1950 census. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 
Fifteen. 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 And what state is the city of Peoria? Illinois. Illinois is right. Well, you're off to a good start. You have thirty-five dollars. Remember, you're going for three thousand dollars tonight. How much of the thirty-five dollars are you going to bet on your second question? Thirty-two. All right. And what state is the city of Shreveport? Uh, Louisiana. You now have sixty-seven dollars. And here's your third question. How much of the sixty-seven are you going to risk? Well, sixty-five. Boo, 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 two, two, two. Oh. <laughs> Sixty-five. Sixty-five. In what state is the city of Allentown? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania! You now have $132. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to go for? Mm, all of it. All of it. Uh-huh. Shoot the works? Yeah. In what state is the city of Nashville? Tennessee. Tennessee is right. And you wind up with $264. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America and the United States. Uh, Groucho, we invited some camp counselors to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Ann Dillon. Her partner is a husband from the studio audience, Mr. Gil Crosby. Folks, come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Well, howdy doody. Howdy do. <laughs> You're a camp counselor, eh? Yes, that's right. And uh, Dylan, huh? How, how old are you, uh, Anne? Nineteen. Nineteen, huh? Yes. You're a very pretty girl. <laughs> Thank you. You don't look too bad yourself, old boy. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gil Crosby, huh? That's right. You're the husband? That's right. Two perfect strangers walk up here, and without a moment's hesitation, I can tell which one is the husband. <laughs> Where are you from, Hus? That's short for husband, and what husband isn't a little short these days? Where are you from, uh, Mr. Crosby? I'm from Oslo, Norway. Oh, Norway, huh? As a prospective bride, uh, where are you from, uh, Anne? Southgate. Southgate? Yes, uh-huh. Is that a town? It's a city. Oh. Well, thanks for correcting me. <laughs> Where is Southgate? It's the other side of Huntington Park. <laughs> I didn't know Huntington Park had two sides. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Mr. Crosby? I'm a pipe organ builder. A pipe organ builder? That's right. Oh. Is that interesting work? Huh? Well, it's very, uh, it's very interesting work. And you should be inside of one of those pipe organs. <laughs> well, I imagine eventually I will be. I can certainly blow loud enough to be a part of it. Are you flighting with me, Anne? No. I didn't you? think so. Yeah? Well, if you want me to, I will. <laughs> well, I, I'd rather you would, rather than... <laughs> you. Do you know when you're flighting? You say you don't think so, huh? Eh? I try not to. You try not to flight? Yes. Why, why? Well, I've never thought about it. <laughs> well, you will. Eh? <laughs> You're going to think a lot about it. Eh? I think you'll flight just naturally. Eh? Yeah, there isn't much to it, you know. You just smile and roll your eyes a little bit. Um, thank you for telling me. <laughs> Just a little less sarcasm, if you don't mind. <laughs> now, you say you're a camp counselor? Yes, that's right. With all the soldiers in camp these days, you must be pretty busy. What camp do you work for? Uh... I work for a Troy camp for girls. What kind of a place is it? Well, it's a lovely place out in the hills. It's um, in the country, and just a very lovely place. <laughs> and that's all you have to say? No, uh, there are uh, girls... From about four to, oh, they run to about twelve. They do. Well, they must be pretty wary after that. <laughs> <laughs> what stamina those kids have, huh? <laughs> I asked my kid yesterday. She's four and a half. I said, oh, you're awfully dumb. I said, you don't even know the alphabet. She says, yes, I do. I says, what's the first letter? She says, A. I says, what's the second? She says, I don't know. I says, well, it's B. I says, now, what's the third letter? She says, 11. <laughs> this is true. 
Not very funny, but it's true. <laughs> now, where is this, uh, this idyllic... Uh, where is this haven for, uh, for youngsters? Well, it's this side of uh, San Bernardino up in the, up in the hills up there somewhere. I see. Now, I have a child of camp age. Perhaps I might be interested. What do you do for the child? Well, we make a home away from home for the children and uh, set up the same examples that you would for them at your home. I just hope I didn't hear her correctly. That's all. <laughs> boo, boo, two, 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 boo, boo. <laughs> What are some of the activities at your camp, in addition to running from 4 to 12? We have hiking and swimming, archery. Hiking? Yes. Uh -huh. Archery? Yes, and we teach the children how to spend their leisure, leisure time. Uh -huh. And then we have nature study. And uh, What's nature study? What does that consist of? Well, we take the children on field trips to uh, study the very... See how they feel? No. <laughs> we like them to learn to... <laughs> Field, F-I-E-L-D. Thanks for the correction. <laughs> and uh, we try to teach them uh, how to enjoy the wonders of nature. Uh -huh. And do you succeed? As a rule, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Are they all as pretty as you, all the counselors at the camp? Oh, more so. I might bring my child up there. <laughs> She's a little young, but I'm not too old. <laughs> now then... We're going to play uh, You Bet Your Life for a Chance at the $3,000 question. Run your $20 into more than the other couples. I can't tell you how much they won, but Mr. Fenneman, the squire, is going to remind our listeners. The soda fountain girl and her partner are still leading with $274. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected occupation. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? 15 15 Fine. All right. What is Cole Porter's occupation? He's a composer. Songwriter and composer is right. Hey, welcome to the start. You have $35. Remember, you're going for $3,000 dollars tonight. That's an enchant. Uh, <laughs> how much of your uh, $35 you are going to try in your second question? 30 Okay. Oak? 30 What is Raymond Chandler's occupation? You know, a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's a writer. You should have known that. He's written dozens of famous detective stories, mystery stories. All right, that's too bad. You've only got how much left? Five dollars. Five dollars. Well, maybe you'll get lucky again. How much of the five are you going to bet? Four. 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 All right, what is Lynn Happy Waldorf's occupation? Please. Oh, talk it over now. Right. Baseball? What is it? Baseball? No, I'm sorry. He's a football coach. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> a key. I'm sorry. You have one dollar. Now right? you're down to one dollar. Now, how much of the one dollar are you going to bet on your last question? <laughs> Here's your last chance to beat the other couple. Uh, who are you here? Kidding. Who oh, was it? Ninety-nine cents. No, but who are <laughs> That's right. Keep a penny for car fare. <laughs> one dollar. One dollar. All right. Here we go. You're going to bet the whole dollar? What is Jose Atebi's profession? Piano. Pianist is right. <laughs> Let's give him another we question. We can't let anybody go away with one dollar. We're <laughs> going to give you one more question. I'll give you one more question. If you get it right, you win ten dollars. Think hard now. No help in the audience, please. In what game do you use golf clubs? <laughs> I guess golf. Golf is right. Huh? <laughs> Thanks and good luck to the Minnesota Planet Game. Well, you two wound up with $2, and that means that the soda fountain girl and the actor with $274 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Now, in just one minute, I'll ask the big question, but first, here's something of interest to everyone. If you're looking for a used car, chances are the most confusing problem on your mind is where to buy it. Well, here's your answer. You'll find the best used car values in town at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. Here's why. 
First of all, some of these used cars are DeSotos and Plymouths, traded in by his regular customers. Cars the DeSoto Plymouth dealer sold originally, and serviced since the day they were new. Of course, a DeSoto Plymouth dealer also takes in many other popular make cars as trade-ins. Really fine cars with lots of miles of good, faithful service in them. So, for the make and model used car that best fills your needs and best fits your pocketbook, go to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. And here's the soda fountain girl and the actor all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. All right, here we go for $3,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. Now, you can talk it over, you know. Three Americans have won Nobel Prizes for literature. Pearl Buck and Eugene O'Neill are two. For $3,000, who was the third? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Sinclair Lewis. Sinclair Lewis! That's right. You win $3,000. You had the right answer, so you win $3,000. What are you going to do with all that money? <laughs> oh, are you talking to me? I'm going to... Uh... <laughs> you tell him first. Go on. What are you going to do with yours? Well, first of all, I'd like to send a washing machine to my sister-in-law because she's got two kids and... Well, and she's she... going to wash the kids in the washing well, machine? <laughs> two kids can create an awful lot of washing. Yes, yes, they, they can. They don't have a washing machine. Well, that's... I don't know what else I, I would do with it except that... Well, there's always me. I mean, myself. if you... <laughs> if you run out of notions of how to displace this money, just I'll give you my phone number later <laughs> in the evening. Uh, you'll get it anyhow. Now, let's see, George. What... <laughs> And uh, what are you going to do with your swag? You going well, to buy a washing machine for your sister? <laughs> no. I, I've always wanted to go to New York and try and get some work acting, and I'd like to use this if I could when I graduate from school. Well, I think you're going to be a big success as an actor. You have a good speaking voice, and you're a fine-looking fellow, and you're, you're comparatively bright. <laughs> <laughs> well, you really cleaned up tonight. Congratulations from the more than 3,000 or so the Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you very much. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Mark Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, Detroit is celebrating its 250th birthday with a year-round festival. Be sure to visit Detroit this summer. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs> <laughs>